Hey everybody, it's Jonas Q. Ross, the host of the Jonas Q. Radio Show. Listen here, go get your friends in, go tell Pookie and them, uh, uh, Junebug and everybody. I have some legends of quartet gospel music that are on with me and I'm going to introduce them one by one. Again, like this, share, tell a friend, tell a neighbor that everybody is on. You all comment your questions if you have any questions uh, concerning the industry. Uh, again, I, I say this again, concerning the industry. Uh, Ask these legends, the do's, the don'ts, the things of that nature, the things that can, that can make it better for you all as far as longevity's sake. They know the ropes. They've been in it for over 30 years, so I'm sure they can tell you all something, the do's, the don'ts, uh, and a whole lot of other stuff. So, again, thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to introduce them one by one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Tim Woodson is on with us tonight. Tim Woodson from the Heirs of Harmony and also the Mighty Clouds of Joy. Ladies and gentlemen, there's the legendary Paul Porter. As Paul Porter, we all know the Mr. Two Wayne's man. Yes, <laughs> there is there is Bishop Teddy Cross. He's on with us tonight. Uh, and also we have, uh, I, I, I'm just going to call her what she is. She is the dynamic vocalist th Woo! throughout the years, 40 plus yes, years. Lord. 40 plus years. Yes. That's yes. Hey, Tiffany, yes. how y'all feeling? Good. Wonderful. Blessed. 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 Getting better. All right. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Uh, I'm gonna, let's do this. We have a brief introduction of yourself for the people that don't know you because a lot of young folks may not know who you are. Just give a brief introduction of, of, of yourself, starting with Tim Woodson. Grace and peace, everybody. So glad to be here tonight. Uh, Tim Woodson, Heirs of Harmony out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, also uh, along with uh, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Los Angeles, California. Bishop Paul Porter. Hi. I'm Paul Porter. Uh, I guess Christian Ayers, Paul Porter solo, and then, of course, I've done a lot of work with the Canton Spiritual, so uh, I'm just honored to be here. Okay. Dr. Teddy Cross. I'm Teddy Cross, uh, formerly of the uh, Gospel Keynotes, Tyler, Texas, and also a solo artist, also uh, Master's Choice. Um, that's me. All right. And Tiffany Tutu AG. Yes, my name is Tiffany, and they call me Tutu, and I'm the lead singer of the Truthettes for over 40 years. Wow. I'm so glad wow. to be part of this tonight. Wow, it yeah. don't it don't even appear to be that long. Well, I guess I, I guess it is because I'm forty, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember God has always stood by my side when I was a little boy. So hey, I guess it I guess it has been forty plus years. Listen here, uh, I'm gonna go right into it. Uh, Paul Porter, we know you've been in the industry such a long time. Listen here, what has been your motivation uh, in this quartet music genre? Well, my motivation is ministry and, and, and uh, you know, just <clears throat> blessing people with a word from God, you know, and uh, when you're, you're called to do this, uh, it's not your choice. I mean, you know, you can either heed to the word of the Lord or, or, or go on your own. But I mean, just the calling on my life is, is you know, it always hasn't been peaches and cream, but it's it's just been an honor to serve God. So. That's what keeps me going is just knowing that he loves me and I love him and I'm committed to his will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same question to you too, too. Again, you've been out here so long. What has been your, your motivation to keep doing what you do? Um, I think that my motivation um, that causes me to um, want to continue in this gospel, um, gospel work, shall I call it, is being a blessing to the people and listening to the stories of the people and how uh, God has always stood by my side and every step of the way has gotten them through uh, dark times. Uh, I thank God for the purpose that he has placed. As Paul, uh, as Paul said, uh, the, the call, you know, when God has called you to do something, uh, you right. do what God has called you to do. And that actually brings more motivation. I'm, I'm so, so grateful that, that God has called me to do this. And even though you guys haven't really heard from the truth that's in a while, um, we're still on the battlefield. Just because you don't see us don't mean that we're not working for the Lord. Right. So um, my purpose is what keeps me motivated. 
That's right. That's right. And um, I say you, well, they may not see you, but the music is still being played. I guarantee you that uh, you. because I'm st I was in a market the other week, and what I heard on the radio, uh, Make a Way came on the radio. That that old Malico acoustic piano hit, and I, I automatically knew what what that song was. So hey, right. you, so then that you're still being uh, your music is still penetrating hearts today. Listen here, if you all could. My qu this question is for uh, Pastor Teddy Cross. If you could change anything of the industry today, what would it be? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't really change anything in the industry. Uh, you said something earlier, <laughs> uh, and, and it kind of brought back a lot of memories. Uh, you said, you know, to to ask us what the do's and the don'ts are. <laughs> And I'm just going to be honest, I've done all the don'ts, and I'm trying to learn how to do the do. <laughs> I just, you know, right. I, you know, I've done, I've done good. And to be honest with you, uh, Paul and I was on a call even last night, and, and he really made me feel good because, you know, um, sometimes you just don't know who life you've touched. And, you know, he was telling me that how I touched his life. And, and lately I've heard other artists, you know, younger artists who are coming up and saying, you know, they, that I've touched their lives. And, and, and it really kind of uh, brings life back to me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the thing about it is uh, I've always loved ministry. Um, I haven't always been true to ministry, but I thank God that I am now. Uh, the industry is going to change. And one thing my spiritual father told me, Bishop Paul Morton, and he says, you know, that you marry uh, the mission or the assignment. You don't marry the method. So that means things are going to change. You don't change your message. But it's like, you know, years ago, uh, when, when I first came out on the road, nobody had cell phones. Now everybody has cell phones. So you got to change the method. Everybody got a personal computer in their hands. And uh, y'all remember when they had uh, the other media that, that went out? I can't remember. What, MySpace. Y'all remember MySpace. Now That's nobody right. knows what MySpace is. Everybody's either Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, and whatever the rest of these medias are. So, I, I and you remember when we had uh, vinyl records and and, uh, you know, I even remember it wasn't popular then. I remember we had the 78, 78 records that my mother had a record player where you had to crank up. And and so things have changed, you know, throughout the time. I remember when it when he went to eight track cassette players and then you had this cassette uh, recording and reel to reel and and uh, CDs. And, and now, you know, that's about that's about to be extinct. And. We come through all of these arrows. I wouldn't change a thing because I've seen things change over the years. The main thing is we as an industry has to adapt. Don't right. fight the process. Right. We have to adapt to what's going on. I mean, you know, like right now I'm 64 and I'm still trying to adapt. I mean, you had to help me get on here tonight. So, but, but, but I made it. You made it. I made it. <laughs> but but you know uh i would change i would say i would change our own attitude i'm changing myself i'm reinventing myself uh i'm thanking god for younger people you know like yourself to help me and and i'll grab it because I, I mean i love technology so so i'll grab it and run and i'll adapt to what's going on today and the main thing is i would say this especially as quartet we have to be relevant mm -hmm. to what's going on don't fight young people find out what they what they do wh why they do what they do think about it when we were young older people really didn't understand us why because we had our own language right. we had our own crew we had our own set of things and a lot of times they missed it because they didn't understand us. We got to try to understand what's going on. What are they listening to? Why they're listening to what they're listening to? Now, can we can we adapt to the method that's going on and and be relevant? 
don't mean we got to change our styles or, or, you know, but there are some things that we have to change to be relevant. And I look mm -hmm. at Pastor Shirley Caesar as, as, as long as she's been in the game, she's still relevant. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, there's a method. There's something that she did right. We don't fight the process. Don't fight the process. Adapt to what's going on. Don't change your message. Wow. That's good. That's powerful. That's good. Real good. That's, yes, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the somebody just late just come in the room, but nevertheless, he's here. Keith Wonderboy Johnson has made his arrival. He, he, he getting doctor night. He getting <laughs> uh, brother Jonas. Brother Jonas, can I interject something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody can somebody tell Keith Wonderboy that um all of us have a little light on us, and I know I'm just <laughs> dark and crispy. I know I'm burnt and crispy, but I cannot see Keith like I need to. Can he put on some type of light on his? Because I didn't know that was him. I All thought right. that was just somebody that was a friend of yours. I take until that you said his name. <laughs> and so, if you guys could help uh, pray up some light on Keith, right. that uh, is, I know it will help us to that is go Paul further. Sure. <laughs> From Chicago, Alabama. That is him. <laughs> oh, God. Well, <laughs> yeah, but this, this is it was good to have you, Keith, man. I'm glad you made your arrival. I'm glad you made it to the house. Listen, my next question is to Tim Woodson. Uh, what is the best advice you've been given? Uh, during your years of ministry? Hmm. Well, the best advice I've been given was given to me by my father. My father started me out singing as a child. He sung with the original Heirs of Harmony, and everywhere he went, I would go. And when the Lord started to elevate me, the, my dad sat me down and told me, don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. Woo! So that's what he, that's the best advice I've ever received. Don't let your gift take you where your character can't keep you. And that simply means that there's a lifestyle that comes along with singing the gospel. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't say anything and every, every time we want to say it, we can't do everything we want to do. We can't go some places and we have to uh, remain uh, nobody's perfect, but there's a lifestyle that comes along with this. So I would say my father taught me how to live that life I sing about. It's very important. Okay. Keith? Somebody's fire alarm going <laughs> on. <off. laughs> Keith? Y'all Keith? gonna stop coming for me. <laughs> that is what y'all gonna stop doing. <laughs> Listen, listen, that's your sunset key. <laughs> yeah. I tried to do the, the I, evening is, sun. Is that a, is that enough light for you, Paul? No. Well, it's only shining on your head, but we will go on and, and pray for your yeah. strength. It's well, just shining you know on your ball. You know that head it, it, at least ain't nobody. Well, no, Teddy got a bald head now too. So, <laughs> so. Oh, <hello. laughs> Listen, my next my next question is to Keith. Keith, you've been on this industry in the industry for over over thirty years. I, I'll say over thirty years. What has been your longevity to keep you going to do what you do? Uh, this is it's like a gumbo of things. I I thank God for uh, how what said. My story is basically the same. My dad, you know, since I was born, my dad brought me into this, and I thank God for one of the it's greatest the mentors. Huh? Yeah. I, I just thank said God. Mr. Field. Yeah. Right. I thank God for my dad and I thank God for one of the greatest mentors that I can ever ask for. I believe it was God ordained in Mr. Harvey Watkins Senior. I mean Junior. What y'all love hammers. Uh so and the thing was part of it is listening. Mm. See, when the Lord give you favor that these great people will pour into you and talk to you and give you advice. I would say one of the disadvantages of the, the new generation, they don't listen. They don't listen. Mm -hmm. It's for, it's, you know, people give you advice and then you don't listen. Mm -hmm. So I, in, in relationships, so I 100% agree with what, what Tim said is relationships. And, you know, your talent can get you in a room, but your relationship and your character mm -hmm. is what to keep you there. So I ask the, the, the young people nowadays, you know, they quick to throw names. 
oh, so and so is my dog. So and so is my 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 son, my dad. So I asked the one. I said, well, you you endorsing this person, but do that that person endorse you? That's the question to ask. Do they endorse you? Hmm. So I mean, it, it, I think believe they they just have lost what it is the base of it. You know, we we. I froze. Mm -mm. Paul, you froze. Oh, I did. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> See? See, you know, and you gotta be able to deal with everybody. Bad hands too. They go example right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that way you can they go get example right there, Jonah. Anybody yeah. that know Paul, if you can deal with Paul Porter. Yeah. You, can, yeah. Yeah. you can deal with uh, anybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my next question <laughs> is for Tutu. Uh, with you being a female female vocalist that's in quartet, uh, and there's a lot of young female quartet groups that are coming that are coming up, and they they are some dynamic singers that are real mm -hmm. real good. What can you give them to to kind of steer them in the right direction? Because some of them are in the, some of them going left in a sense. But then, what kind of information can you give to them? to steer them in the right direction? Well, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind uh, with this question is self-respect. Uh, mm. And we as females uh, got to be very, very careful because this is a male-dominating. Uh, quartet is male-dominating. And so um, I think one of the, the most important things, and I think my mom, you know, that when we were coming up, uh, that she, she kept a tight rein on us because... She, she didn't allow us to do a lot of things. And I thank God for her now. And she taught us to make sure that you respect yourself. You can't expect anybody else to respect you if you don't respect yourself. And then another thing uh, is humility. Humility. Be approachable. Be humble. You have got to remember that you are not better than the people that you serve. You've got to be approachable. Wow. And I think... Um, I think those things are, are the things that come to mind when you ask that question. Okay, well, that's a good that's a good place to put them. Paul Porter, are you there? You you, you still froze? Oh yes, I'm I'm holding on. Okay, so, I, I don't want I don't want you to freeze on us. Listen here, uh, when the there's a lot of things that you have done outside of quartet. You've done a lot of solo stuff. You've done everything. Uh, as far as the uh, the other, I don't say the other side, but you're well respected on the on the uh, other side. Well, I will say the other side too. What what is the difference between the? What is the difference on uh, each side? On each side, what what would be the difference for you for each side? Is that me going out? Yeah, that's your house phone on. ringing. I was blaming it on Keith, but. Uh, to me, it's a slight difference, but it's it's all in the same because we're all ministering about the same God. But you 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 know, I guess the quartets hang together, and the, and the, and, the, and those artists hang together, and they some you know I'm not going to say who is who and who feels that they are superior of the others, mm -hmm. but you know you're not as respected on one side as, as you are as you are the other and of course you know quite naturally in your genre you i mean in what you do you know everybody hangs together and, and then we have our differences on this side so i'm sure they have their differences on that side but all of us are doing the same thing as ministering and then even if we all come together just say for instance we're doing the bilo center down i don't know if you're familiar with that but tutu i know she's familiar with the bilo center where they may have a collage of artists where you have uh Diedrich Haddon and Fred Hammond and Christian Ayers and Lee Williams and you know the traveling echoes and then you know uh maybe some female singers as well. So in that, you know, when we all come together, what I stand off and look at is all of us are singing ministry, but you know, sometimes it can be non-social, this, that, and the other. And I'm just saying we gotta learn how to work together and all of that, but it's and and in me working on that side, I, it was a pleasure for me because most of the time I was working with Bishop Brand Allen and bless you know uh, his family, uh, the Lake. I mean that just devastated me to um, 
you hear of his passing, and we were very close. But working with him on that side, I mostly worked in the Church of God in Christ uh, area. And at the end of the day, man, I just really never ran into the problems that maybe some of the other artists have. And um, to jump in both genres, man, I just, it, it's, a, it's a state of mind because, I mean, when you take somebody incredible like Tutu, and I, I just, I could say so much about Miss Tutu. I don't know what to even call her because I'm so honored to see her on here. And I've just been a huge fan of hers for so many years. And I can go on and on and, you know, <laughs> say so much about her. But she's an incredible vocalist. Tim's an incredible vocalist. Uh, uh, Teddy's an incredible vocalist. And Keith, Keith was saying, you know, rings around you. So at the end of the day, I just feel like everybody's capable of connecting with these artists and do that. But sometimes, you know, um, we're never called to come to that side and work with them. And I, you know, and we, I've just been fortunate to do some of that, but you know, I'm a quartet, you know, uh, guru for life. I mean, you know, that's what I grew up in and I don't want to change that, but I enjoy going over there and working with them. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming they enjoy me when I come over there, but you know, I'm just my same self. I go over there tickling people under the arm like I do over here. Right. <laughs> right, and, and you're definitely a character on this side. So I know if you, I know what you oh, do yeah. on this side. So they embrace you. Oh, I, <laughs> I used to have bitch laughing all the time. So you know, at the end of the day, I'm just you know, I just keep it going the same way. But you know, you you, you could feel differences, but we're all in this thing together, man. And, and it's only one God in, that we're talking about. So it's all ministry. Right. It's just a variety. Right. And I, and I appreciate your honesty with that. Uh, my next question is getting into Teddy Cross. What was your experience like singing with the late, great Willie Neal Johnson? First, I know I learned I learned this from years ago. You were the guitar player first, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You you was playing guitar. Yeah. So what was your experience with the late, great Willie Neal Johnson? How was it? Well, I lived my dream. I, uh, I know <clears throat> everybody knows Warner Glover as brand new, but... Uh, he was just, he, I put it like this. He did like Keith Wonderboy. Uh, Keith Wonderboy, Wonderboy wasn't, he wasn't the first Wonderboy. So it's like brand new wasn't the first brand new. I was a brand new and everybody that came on the road was a brand new. Right. He just took the name and ran with it. But uh, I, I, I never forget one day, I can't remember where we were, but we were on tour with the, uh, with the Jubilee, the Pilgrim Jubilee. And I was on the Jubilee's bus and, and Clay Graham asked me something. And uh, he says, man, everybody call you brand new. Everybody call you uh, Sprank brand new and green. And they call me Lope. They call me all kind of names. He was saying <laughs> Fee. They call me Fee. Uh, anyway, he said, man, why? He said, why you don't get mad? <laughs> this is when I first got with the group. He said, why you don't get mad? I said, man, I'm living my dream. <laughs> I'm out here talking on your bus, talking to you on tour, and I'm running into all the people that I've admired all my life, uh, and, and that's that's what that's the way I took it. And then uh, to to be with the legend, a lot of times, you know, I, I was uh, uh, I was in awe of being on on the road. I turned this ringer off. I don't know why. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it keeps keep doing it. Hello, Hello, Pizza Hut. Hello, Pizza Hut. Anyway, uh, to be around Willie Neal Johnson, I'll never forget when they came to my, my hometown. Uh, and and uh, those who have been around Quartet a long time, you knew the guitar player that was before me. His, his name was Little James. And uh, uh, listen, y'all got to hold on one second. I got to tend to something real quick. I'm sorry. Talk for me, Paul. <laughs> that, that was none other than Teddy Cross. <laughs> Golly. So we're going to pass it back to our host at this time. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy passed it to me. So when he finished that story, I was listening to the great Tutu say, how yes, you have to be humble and approachable. Right, right. And Tutu is humble, but 
I have to say, Tutu, you ain't used to talk to me. Teddy, <laughs> Paul, and, and Tim, they older than me. I come behind her, and, you know, to me, Tutu was our Thelma from Good Times. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Doc. <laughs> Boy, Man. Tutu, you I, remember, I don't know if you remember this, Tutu. I think you might have been 16. I was younger than you. We was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I walked you to the store so you could buy some ice cream. Boy, you couldn't tell me nothing after that. <laughs> Hey, look, look, I, I wasn't gonna say nothing. I wasn't gonna say nothing, but I had a crush on all of them. I thought they were the prettiest girls. Ooh. They were so pretty, and they, you know, they had this little. Uh, it was like a Texas drawl or something. They was yeah. and stuff like that. I was like, "Oh man, they're so pretty." <laughs> what was that? But, when y'all came oh, out, Lord. that album but, cover but, but, when but she see, came but, out with but, them. But, them, them, uh, I thought it was like a, uh, 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 like a, almost a prom gown. They had all them, they had that mushroom cut. Oh, Lord, yeah. that was it. Yeah. Lord, that was that it. Was, I mean, we were just like, we were really, <laughs> they were so intimidating because they were so pretty. But at the same time, you be all soft and everything and mushy until they get to that stage and until they just get crush to that the whole mic. out. <laughs> they get that mic. And, it was a war zone. They just come and knock you out. Cause, man, I never will forget when she came out with this song, and there was something going on in Atlanta, Georgia, and some. Every time she would get to that, Lord, look down on those children in Atlanta. Oh yeah, that's what that, just that guy was. Is... <laughs> <laughs> man, I was saying, oh no. It's over with. You might well just close the door yeah. to the program. Mm -hmm. Not that we were in competition or anything, but you know, after they pull the chairs back up, you know, yeah, there wasn't nobody to sing to. Yes, sir. Uh, I wow. I tell you like that. My dad used to teach me, take it like a man. Take it like a man. Take it like a man. Because when they man, came, they they should have been <laughs> another team. Instead of the true test, they should have been called the tornadoes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> big dad, he's the head of our next. I don't know if you remember that when he used to have a battle of the use. It was like, I would open up and it'd be her and uh, Lil Cedric. All of us would be on the same show. Oh, my man. God. Tutu used, to, Tutu used to whip us really Tutu good. Tutu came out with us really a, bad, a baseball bat. She whipped us really bad. He came out with a baseball <laughs> bat and a hammer. She wasn't playing at any given day. She was walking that aisle and them girls would be falling behind her. And old Gayla was so pretty and big. You know? I was just like, oh, Lord, I'm uh, soft, but they're killing this place. She messed around and went and got that perfect Jerry curl. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one with the, with the swoop right there? That she was oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes Lord. <laughs> but, but needless to say, I would say I'm, I was a, I, I'm still a huge fan, and I just praise God for your ministry, too, too, because Amen. I'm telling you, you had so much knowledge at a young age of how to work the stage as well as minister to people back then. I was just so amazed when y'all came. I said, where did these girls come from? But uh, your uh, ministry and, and your mental knowledge attaching to the ministry that God gave you a gift from birth, man, I was just a huge fan. And I was so honored to even just get a chance to write something on one of y'all. I couldn't believe I was writing on the record and singing a song with them. I was going like, uh-oh, I'm doing something now. <laughs> well, since you talked about that, I was going to bring it up. What was that experience like when you when you wrote for Tutu and the Truth Fest? What was that experience like for you? I was in heaven. <laughs> I was in heaven from both sides because they were so soft spoken in the studio. You know, Tutu has a strong voice, but in the studio, okay, well, what are we doing? You know, she'd be talking like that. And when she get that mic, man, when, you don't know what the model may bring. And, you know, everything that they would hit, man, they were so accurate and so talented. And she had so much knowledge in ministry she she was just a special gift from birth but it was like it, it was so confusing because they was pretty and they could sing and then to know that i was working with them i was so tim intimidated i was really intimidated i'd go in there delicate uh you want to try this uh i mean here's how the song go 
And after that, I just, you know, look at you two of them. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Whatever y'all doing, I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You weren't about to tell Tutu nothing. <laughs> Maybe here. she can pick. Listen, there you his phone froze up. You look at him. he froze up. I think Teddy froze up too. That's no. the ice man. It's the ice man. Listen, <laughs> Tim Woodson, we know you've had uh, a number of years with Joe Lagun and Richard Wallace and all those guys. What was your experience like with the Mighty Clouds of Joy? Oh my God, man. I listen, like like uh Teddy said, it was a dream come true. Uh, not to take all the time, but uh, at 14 years old, I had a chance. My father took me to hear the Mighty Clouds. I was not a Mighty Cloud fan, and I was I was Willie Banks 100%. And Daddy said, well, I'm going to show you something. So I heard the Mighty Clouds of Joy here in Grand Rapids at 14 years old. My life was changed. And that day, I walked to the record table and told Joe Lagan, one day I'll sing with you. And you know, everybody know how Joe talked. If you, if you can dream it, you can have it. So... I, I began to dream and begin to you know perfect my craft, man, and imitate them. And at uh, 29, I was able to join that group. And I'm going to tell you, man, to stand next to a man with so much voice, so much anointing, and so much knowledge of quartet singing, of singing, period, uh, it was a learning experience for me. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It took me all over the, all over the, all over the land, uh, different countries, a lot of people. When he got sick in his last days, uh, I was honored to pretty much care for him on the road, carrying his bags, uh, making sure he ate, um, giving him his medication. And a lot of times people uh, would call me Flunky Jonas. They would call me Joe Lagun's Flunky in his latter days. But it was honor. It was not being a, 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 a slave. It was being a servant. And it was honoring him for the gift and anointing that was on his life. And I think... Uh, in this dispensation or this period of quartet, like he said, we got to learn how to honor our elders, you know, learn from them, from them, get a mentor because you don't know it all. We didn't know it all coming on the road. So I would tell the young groups, get with someone that's been out here for a long time that can mentor you, you and teach you what to do and what not to do. So you won't have to make the same mistakes that we made coming along. So uh, I, I'm telling you, man, my best experience with the Mighty Clouds of Joy was not uh, singing uh, in uh, Europe, Africa, London, Japan, none of that. My best experience was to honor those men for the legacy that they left here wow. with, the, with the quartet industry. That was my, my best experience. Wow. Hey, Jonas, hey, can, Jonas, can I, can I piggyback on something he said? Go ahead. Uh, and it's about serve, serving and servitude, you know. Yeah. Serve, yes. You serve, serve, you serve your way to the top. Jesus asked a, I mean, the disciples asked a question. Says, who going to be the greatest among mm -hmm. us? Wow. He said, wow. the one who serves all. Listen. Right. My God, my God. There is no disrespect in serving. Paul, right. him, he came to our church. And no one was serving him. I volunteered I was blown away. to carry his bag, to yeah. carry his his records. I didn't allow him to carry anything, right? Because you know you have to give honor where honor is due. When someone comes and and you know I would dare let any of you come to my uh, uh, house or my church and not serve you. Because mm -hmm. you are bringing a gift, preach to me. preacher. You're bringing something to edify the body of Christ. Okay. Preach so preacher. So you where you give honor where honor is due, and and it's not about the level. I mean, I've had local groups that I invited to to Greater Saint Stephen, and I served them because here's the thing: you you cannot go to where you're trying to go. With ego, you got to no. go with serving. Think about it. Eve, I, I, I watched a, uh, a movie one time, and it was about uh, Dick Cheney, who was the vice president to uh, uh, George W. Bush. Dick Cheney started by volunteering. He volunteered and, and wasn't even getting paid, but he worked his way to the top. Mm -hmm. So we have to serve each other. 
is not about our ego. Is I mean, I watched Keith Wonderboy when I was with the keynote. Keith Wonderboy came out there just getting offerings everywhere we went. Willie Neal Johnson took him on his wing, getting offered. I watched the the truth that I mean, the these people were 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 servants. They were givers, and now God has just turned the thing around, and now we gotta serve each. Other. So I just wanted to piggyback on it. That was good, uh, uh, Pastor Tim. I, I, got, I, got one more, I got a one piggy man on that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say it, Jonas? Go I'm ahead, man. Go, go, go ahead. No, no, go. Go. Let, let me just say that what that meant to me, because here, here's one of my colleagues, and it's almost like another character, but mm -hmm. here's one of my colleagues that we running up the road, laughing, talking together, singing on gospel programs, but then he he stepped out of that zone when I came to his church to minister under the you know jurisdiction of Bishop Paul Morton. So Teddy became a servant to me who was literally my colleague. What did it do for me? It got me ready for ministry that day. I was I was feeling timid because I know I'm going, Lord, I don't want to mess up at Bishop Paul Morton's church. Teddy erased all of those emotions for me by him making me feel welcome. Here is somebody I'm comfortable with. And then by him serving me, carrying my bags and everything, I'm saying, Teddy, you ain't got to do this. He said, no, let me serve you. And at the end of the day, it got me prepared for ministry. My mind was focused and I was able to go out and minister to others. Amen. Amen. Can I add this? I think that that's part of our job. We need to share these nuggets. So mm -hmm. just like, and it's, it's just a coincidence that both of them are, 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 are preachers and 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 ministers. And if I'm not mistaken, both of y'all are pastors, right? Mm -hmm. that's so right, you know, sir. you know the thing about serving. Just like this, this new generation, one. They need to they need to come to church more and they will learn about serving. They'll know what it is about serving. So now how the Lord put special blessings for you when you serve. So just like myself, uh they I've been singing a long, long time. Like I said, now I'm not gonna you know how they like to say I've been out there. No, I was not out there when Tutu was out there. I was a local artist in New York, but I, I had aspirations of, because I saw a child star to me as Tutu, I'm like, that's what I wanted to do. But yeah. the, the Lord said it wasn't time. So when I became a teenager, I still had the, I had the, the will and the everything. Then I got a little frustrated. Then Terry, like how uh, Teddy, you remember? When I was a and I was in teenage, I was in college, and I started yeah. what we call the replacements, Jonas. I started the replacement. And he, the Lord didn't bless the ministry of my group yet, but we started the replacements. We called ourselves replacements and would hand the cards out. And one of my top prospects was Willie Neal Johnson. It was a few nights that I had to be Teddy. Right. <laughs> I was Teddy. I, I did my best to sing the song just like he used to sing it. I played the bass for him. I served. Uh, basically, my resume speaks for itself. I, I basically played for everybody. But since the Mississippi group, you know, Paul had that that Michael Jackson Mississippi curl, you know, when you had that little <laughs> thing in, the, in his head. So Paul ain't let me work with him. So, but that was all right. Don't let him I, talk about me like that. I, I played for everybody else. Come on now, y'all remember when Paul had that Michael Jackson? Yes, sir. That little, now that was a deadly dude. And then you know, I honor you for that, Pastor Tim. I remember That's that. Right. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember that. I remember that. Now we mm -hmm. was we was in a place that the Irish Quartet was not. It was called Take It to the Bridge. Yep. In Houston, right. in the Houston Astrodome. Mm -hmm. Myself and the Mighty Clouds of Joy, we was the only one quartet there. T.D. Jakes, Kirk Franklin was everybody was there. And Tim, mm -hmm. now that that green came a little bit out of Tim that day. Tim didn't take his uniform off. He said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> "You lied, you lied he on said, it, man." He served Joe 
and he had a picture with everybody to remember that day. I got yeah. you in some of my pictures, uh, Pastor Tim. Yeah, yeah. I was just getting started, man. I was but just getting started. Okay. But back to, like, seriously, though, that's a nugget that our next generation, they got to hear. They got, got to, to know the blessings. About. It's, it doesn't make you local because you serve it. You right. so, you showing homage to somebody. That's right. They, Let they, me go ahead, Tim. Not, Okay. They fight against that word local, but we all start from somewhere. Uh, yeah, there's nothing uh, wrong with local. Colonel Sanders started local before he became national, so it, it starts right. with which starts with the place. So, uh, so don't take that word local lightly. Hey, we are, we yeah. all have been local. I, at this fact, I'm Bloom, still local. I'm local. Bloom where you planted. That, That's exactly. right. Tim has That's a scripture right. he wants he wants to share. Well, you know, I just want to piggyback and and uh, what we all said. Everybody's saying uh, what we need to hear tonight. But it's about honor. It's about sowing and reaping. Uh, uh, we have to learn what, what what first is honor. We don't know what honor is. A lot of us don't. Honor is honesty. Honest honor is fairness and integrity in what you believe and your actions. So we believe in honoring, but we don't show that through our actions. The Bible lets us know, and I'm not trying to preach here tonight, but the Bible lets us know in Luke 16 and 12, the word says, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? You know, so yeah, I was honored to carry Joe Lagan's bag. I was honored not to tell his, his business, God rest his soul. I was honored to go to his hotel room every morning at seven o'clock and take his breakfast. I was honored to give him his medicine. I was honored to iron his clothes. I was honored to carry his bag. I was honored to take him to the airport and make sure he got back home. Listen, man, you have to honor. In order for you to get where you want to go, you got to sow into someone that's already there. That's Sowing right. and reaping. You know, the Bible says as long as the earth remains, there'll always be seed time and harvest. And that doesn't just mean money. You understand? You got to learn how to yeah. sow in where you want to go. Learn how to honor somebody. Every time. I see Dr. Spencer Taylor. I call him Dr. Spencer Taylor. Yeah. I did not call him Brother Taylor. I call him Dr. Spencer. Every time I see him, you know, when he comes into the room, I stand up. I don't care if we're at a program in the dressing room. If he comes in, I stand up. Uh, uh, every time I see him on his birthday, I put a little money in his hand. Why? Right. Because it is honoring the longevity that God has given him because I want the same thing. Hey, Amen. Right. Wow. I'm through. That's good. That's good. Listen. And, and as a matter of fact, on one of my broadcasts, we, I was talking about, uh, I call him Mr. Taylor, Mr. Spencer Taylor. Um, and I, I was talking, especially to the younger quartets. Listen, when the Howie QCs come on, when the when the uh, the Nightingales come on, when the Jackson Southern Airs come on, when these groups come on like this, listen, I'm not telling you, do your best, but you cannot compete. No, you're talking no. about a man 92 years old. He's got longevity. He's been beside Sam Cook. He's been beside Johnny Taylor. I mean, all of the greats. He have been around. He got he got stories that's older than your grandmother. Right. So I mean, the, you cannot compete. Yeah, maybe it, when you matter, matter as a matter of fact, when you get around that kind of. Uh, legacy you should do like pastor tim said contribute mm -hmm. you i'm telling you that's an investment in your own future that's a seed mm -hmm. so i just wanted to put that out there to somebody you know who's who's watching and and want to work your way to the top serve and plant seeds no. These preachers have preached show enough. <laughs> they had a word for us. Oh, oh, listen, man. listen, Tutu, uh, again, you, you being a female vocalist and things of that nature, uh, if somebody wanted to follow your footsteps, again, because your music is so, is so profound, I got to go back to the music. The things that you sing, every step of the way is one of yes. my favorites by far. Speak to Me, of course, is like by far still one of my favorites. I can go on and on. You have a multiplicity of hits. But, <laughs> <laughs> what, but I'm going to ask this. What is your favorite song that, that ministers to you that that you sing? 
Um, if I had to pick one, it would probably be God stood by my side. That is it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's but a new song. That, too. I, I go to a whole nother place. I, I God stood by my side. That song right there, it, it does it for me every time. I can listen to it on uh, you know, on YouTube or whatever. And it, it takes me to a place. God stood by my side through many wow. heartaches and pain. Come on, Jesus. Now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. I, yeah, I was, I was real full. I, I was gonna ask you to give us a little verse of it, but you, you, but it's okay. It's Don't, okay. Do that. I'm shout. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't have me running out of here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, and and I'll piggyback on it. Two two songs are so strong and powerful and popular. Mm -hmm. When I say popular. <laughs> To yes. the point, Mr. Brown is on TV singing peanut butter and jelly. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And at the, at the end of the day, God has always stood by my side. Uh, KC and JoJo. KC sings that to this day on Facebook, Instagram. Yes. As a matter of fact, I took KC to church in Memphis, Tennessee. KC Haley. He sang God has always stood by my side as his soul. Wow. Wow. And at the end wow. of the day, he said he loved that song. And so many of your songs, Tutu, has touched so many. But I just, if it, like uh, uh, Keith or and, and uh, Teddy could say, we can go down the list. Y'all had so many hits. Yes. Yes. That at the end of the day, most of everything you sang was a hit. A hit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, but Paul, well. Paul, listen, listen, let, let me take y'all back. I'm, I'm going to say pre Malico. The truth that was singing other folks' song and and had hits with people didn't even they, they want to know who was those girls who, who they were singing Shirley Caesar's song. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were singing Pastor Shirley Caesar's song. And and was Matter of fact, Shirley said, if they're on the road show with me, they cannot sing my song. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So 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 wow. So, Tiffany, Special gift. I'm going to ask you, pre Malico, what was your favorite song that you say? Oh, Lord. <laughs> pre Malico. Hmm. Guys, y'all, I turned 53 on Christmas Day. <laughs> 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 we actually we put out our first 45. In 1975, I was six years, seven years old. Wow. So I, I would actually have to think, yeah, we, we did a, a, our first 45 in um, 75. We did another 45, and then we actually did an album. And Teddy, you may remember this. Uh, right before we signed with Malico, we did an album, and it's uh, Willie Neal Johnson Presents. The yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. you remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Wow. So yeah. that that's woo, Lord. I but look, let me bring you, let me let me ask you this. Didn't y'all used to sing sweeping through the city? Yes. Yeah. You know what? But we <laughs> we uh we recorded that. Right. We started singing that after we recorded it. Oh yeah, that's Shirley Caesar's song. That's right. Woo! Y'all swept through the city. <laughs> Well, Jonas, yes. I know you hosting, but can I ask Tutu one question? Go ahead, go ahead, man. Was there ever, was there <laughs> ever a time that you feared going on stage? Because you had so much authority, and you know, you was just like a, a woman in a little in a little girl, and you would always take to that stage and just be so powerful at a yeah. young age. And I'm just asking, mm -hmm. was there ever a time? When you feared going on stage or just felt discombobulated and lost? Not one time. Wow. Mm. It's a, a, not, a gift from birth. Not one time. Yeah. Not one wow. time. And it's, it's all wow. God. Yeah. yeah. It's all God. Yeah. You have to yeah. remember, she was an ultimate pro by the time she was 12. No, so no, no, probably six because yeah. she was choking us way back then. <laughs> I mean, well, it was just no. unreal. I I don't know if y'all remember this outfit. Y'all had some burgundy dresses. They were long burgundy dresses. You remember that? <laughs> y'all had some burgundy-like gowns. 
and y'all came to Jackson, Mississippi to the Masonic Temple. And you y'all had that song out with the little girl that I mean I'm the people over in Atlanta, Georgia. And y'all walked uh -huh. y'all, yeah, child's prayer. And out of all those hits y'all had, and y'all was back to back just slamming, bam, bam, bam. When y'all got to that song and y'all would walk that aisle and you was just like, really? You you had the authority of a Shirley Caesar then. Mm -hmm. You yeah. was walking that aisle and wow. just pointing at people and people just fainting and falling out, screaming like, the, you know, some of them was hollering like somebody was whooping them. <laughs> and <laughs> I was going like, I can't, I mean, I can't understand yeah. how this one, this, this young girl is, is commanding this audience like a woman. And I'm just saying, she just has such a strong mind and a, a, a just a special gift for our delivery on stage. Well, Jonas, yes, sir. Uh, as far as me and I'm, I'm basically the youngest one here. Mm -hmm. I give you, I give you kudos for uh, also inviting and including Miss Tiffany Tutu, because yes, sometimes you know somebody can uh, uh, fall on deaf ears. And at, at sometimes what they don't realize is we are all human. So, of course, that's the devil's job to actually turn you away. Now, I, I should, I'm, I know you can't see me, I get cross eyed. Miss Tutu, did I not tell you this every time? Now, I am, I am honored that I have a production company, Wonder Spirit Productions, and multiple times I had, pe I had people, give me that word again, uh, Jonas. Go on, plug it, Doc. Go on, plug it. Yeah. <laughs> Multi multiplicity <laughs> of times. <laughs> <laughs> multiple times that I put together a whole concert. Oh, she done went out. She went yes. out. But keep but I, come back. She's yeah, coming back. But, but the, really, we can get, you know, deferred away. And just because you have negative voices, that's the, just the devil's job of 15 mm -hmm. people that telling you, you played out or, mm -hmm. you know, nobody, nobody likes your ministry or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we forget, we forget about the. The, the thousands of people that haven't personally been able to contact you directly that you have blessed. Mm -hmm. So I've had the honor of these people directly mm -hmm. ask me. Wow. One of the spirit productions, we want you got this on the person on the show, you got this person on the show. I need you to find Tutu and the truth that I want them specifically wow. on this show. That's I've told her over and over. Now, Tutu, you see, you have Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, little Michael Jackson Porter. You got Teddy Cross, who been, these are some of the greats. And, and see how they looked at you. And I tell you, my first assassination was in Baltimore, Maryland. Little Cedric, he was local then. He was singing lead for the Mighty Wonders. Mm -hmm. And he was singing your stuff. I mean, he annihilated me too, Paul. <laughs> really? <laughs> that joke sung, he sung Child's Prayer and God has always stood by my side. And I'll be honest with you, the Lord ain't blessed me to be like Paul. I, you know, I, that's not one of my gifts, but I know good music. And I <laughs> tell every up and coming female group, I got a niece that I, I was, I'm teaching her the song right now. I said, before you sing one of them corny songs, go back there and sing some of them classic songs. Like a God has always wow. stood by my side. Mm -hmm. Every yes, step so. of the way. You can wow. go, y'all, y'all catalog is, now that's, now we've had that hit. Amazing catalog. Yeah. Hits. Hey, that's mm -hmm. a real catalog. Right. That's mm -hmm. what you call hits. A multiplicity. Wow. Every yeah. record that, that I that I can that I that I know, every record that the truth that did had a hit had one or two hits. I ain't gonna say one oh, or two. Yeah. That every so, step of the way record, it was hot from uh from the first song to, to humble me or the more God blesses you yes. all of, to, oh my to the God. last song of the yes. So, speak to me. Miss, speak, speak to yes. me, yes. Uh-huh. Oh so Miss Tiffany, Miss <laughs> Tiffany too, too, this is your little brother now. 
putting you on front street. You do it at your pace. You do it at your pace. I know we, we know we talk. You know me and you talk. So you do it at yes, your pace. Did. But the people want you back. We do. That's right. They want to see you. She coming. She coming. I, I know she's coming back because she just it's just too many hits. I'm telling you, you got so many fans that still love your music and mm -hmm. people that don't even know that it's you singing the song right. because they're young. Right. Yo, I mean, right. what you planted in this world, Tutu, I promise you, man. You, oh. I mean, we, we ain't even mentioned. Kill open up. Does for you. <laughs> <laughs> this woman got so many out, songs you can go down there. You just go down her catalog. And, and, out, guys. And, it, and it's so it's so key that you say this, Paul and, and Keith. Uh, just in scrolling, trying to find music for tonight. Nevertheless, I couldn't do. I found, found a white boy, a little white kid. Not, no offense to anybody, was singing peanut butter and jelly. Was exactly. Singing, yeah. Was telling the story and everything. And oh he, yeah, I saw he that. He was singing it. Mm -hmm. So that's the influence. So I, I'm going to pick it back off of it. That's the influence that your music ministry has on a lot of people. So I think, and, yeah. And Tutu, look, know this. Not only do people love your music, we love you. You, amen. That's right. We love you. Wow. Thanks so much. We love you. You I, are I, so I, appreciated. Little I remember... I remember I used to be so honest, even though I knew it wasn't the right feeling to have. I was so intimidated with Tutu one time when they first started going out singing, you don't know what tomorrow would bring. Tutu would have to whisper the words to me because I was. <laughs> what is the next line? I was like the cowardly line. <laughs> what is the next line? What is the next line, please? Lord have mercy. That's true. He tells yeah, you. she was saying, Paul, just relax. She was so cool about it instead of going, you know, she could have been fussing like, are you a pro or not? Get up here and sing the song. <laughs> but she never did that. She was always going like, okay, you know, here comes the next song. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. And, you know, I'm going like, okay, just help me with the words. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Listen wow. here. There was, there, was a question, there was a question that came, a question came up in my inbox. This question said, a lot of times people are talking about being humble, but a lot of the other people uh, are not approachable. They say, you, we talk about being humble and approachable, but a lot of people are not approachable. How would you, how would you answer that question, too, too? Okay, and what's the question? The question is: a lot of people they say the 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 legends or the the, the, the legends often talk about uh, being humble and approachable, getting your things in order. But they say, what what do you do when you? When you aren't approachable, when the artist, the legend is not approachable. Um, hmm, what do you do when a leg a legend is not approachable? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really know about that because I've always I've always been approachable. Um man, I don't I mean there's probably really nothing you can do. If somebody yeah. is unapproach unapproachable. I mean, but leave them alone. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. Leave him alone. Yeah, listen. Now, the, just now because I'll tell you this. Go ahead, Teddy, and, and I'll say something behind. Here's it. the thing. Um, a lot of times we we misunderstand what's going on. Right. For instance, mm -hmm. um, like I was trained to serve. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the artist is preparing. Right. To minister, right, and yep. they don't want a lot of conversation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's no harm or no offense, or or sometimes mm -hmm. they some and, and everybody's not alike. I put it like this: you you take Willie Neal Johnson. Willie Neal Johnson could talk to you and talk to you, talk to, you, but there were certain points you had to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. And and now in the general public, Willie was a. He was just a people person. People loved him on yeah. and off stage. Right. But when he was preparing, he would get away from everybody and, and watch, get where he can watch what's going on. 
And not only that, mm. every personality is not a Willie Neal Johnson. Right. Some no. people are just not, they, they are great on stage, right. but you can't hold that right. against them. Against them, right. Everybody is not a people person just because they're an artist mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that they're arrogant. It's just, they may be as timid of you as you are of them. Mm -hmm. Right. That's mm -hmm. their personality. Mm -hmm. Everybody's right. not mm -hmm. a Paul Porter. Paul Porter can talk to right. anybody at any time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you well, know, you well, take... Go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. Teddy. Go ahead, Teddy. Okay, okay. I was just saying, but you take me... Now, I'm I'm sometimes... Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm a talking person, but sometimes, man, I'm just like a mouse. You, you know, yeah, I want to see right. what's going on, check out things, no, and, and sometimes I really just don't know what to say. So, you know, it, it's not offensive to anyone, but here's what I would say. If a person seems unapproachable, wait your turn. I promise you, your turn will come. Uh -huh. can, can I say something, Jonas? Because I flipped the script and I'm glad uh, Teddy said the word seen. Because here sometimes it's what the person, the fan is perceiving before they even get to you. Right. Uh, a lot of times I have been approached They'll walk Can up I to me. Oh, you ain't gonna speak. Because I flipped the script, and I'm glad uh, Teddy said. That's, that's, Is that me talking? Can y'all hear me? That's man, man. get your PA system <laughs> together, man. Get your PA together, man. Get your PA together, man. Damn system one right. It's, it ain't sweet. That's my sound. <laughs> that's my sound, man. I, I'm, I'm I'm fine. I'm okay, fine. you you pre-producing and anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Here's three points, and I hope I remember all three of them. One, the end of the fans. A lot of fans, and maybe this is how that question came up, Jonas. A lot of fans are perceiving you one way before they even get to you. And their mm -hmm. thought process will walk up to you. Like I've had this. I don't know if all of y'all as, as professionals have had this question. Oh, you're not going to speak? Oh, and you, yeah. you're, you probably ain't even paying attention, or you, what you call them, before you can even get out something, they're already chopping you down. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing from a fan. It's just that everybody has a mind, and and and, and it, sometimes they perceive things from you by your gestures and things like that, and it'll cut them off from trying to communicate with you. Oh, he's stuck up or this. And I heard Marvin Winans say, it's not being arrogant, it's knowing who you are and who you are as, as a minister. But he's saying uh, that he's not being arrogant. He just knows who he is. But then at the same point, um, uh, being reachable is, is what we should be because of the fact that the fans are who you know, buy our music and all of that. So, uh, you know, a lot of times when we're preparing and everything, yeah, you could be in another mindset, but I never want to offend an artist, I mean, a, a fan or anything like that. But a lot of times, man, I have caught it. I have got knocked over the head and it wasn't even my mental intent because of the fact that they're perceiving one way before they even get to you. And then, let me add this, I had a first cousin he, he could never be my cousin because he was always the fan. And I'm going to tell you what he did to me in Detroit. He came up to the record table, and I'm just busy trying to sign autographs, trying to sell music. He goes, hey, hey, I'm going to introduce you to my co-worker. So he'd come up, <laughs> introduce me to the co-worker, and he'd get right in front of other people that were buying product and all that. He'll leave and go get somebody else. Yeah, 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 Paul, check this out. This is such, such, such. And I'm going like, man, I really wanted to bop him over the head because at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm going like, oh, no, not you again. He'd be coming like six or seven times. And I'm saying sometimes, you know, some of your fans are over excited and not paying attention to what right. you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's not allowing everybody get a, to get a chance. Right. I remember Tamla Mann, after being on TV and all that, she came to a Shreveport and she just warned him. She said, look, when I come out here, me and my family uh, have our own record company, and we want to be able to service everybody that we can, but I ain't going to be able to stop and hug and kiss everybody. And she wasn't being rude. She was just making it plain before the, the, the aspect of somebody perceives them the right. wrong way. That's right. That's saying? right. That's so, right. So it's just a lot of little things that can make a fan think one way and yeah. perceive and ask that question. Let me... Uh, Say this. Can I say something, Jonas? Go ahead. I, I, I'm with Paul 100% because 
a lot of people, as you said, perceive us as being arrogant or snooty or prideful. But your perception mm -hmm. is not our reality. Just yeah, as a minister, yes. yeah, just as a minister of the gospel, there is preparation time where you have to shut yourself off from the crowd. All these voices coming in your ear, you got to shut yourself off and get a word from God. Uh, mm -hmm. Before we say now, when I go to a program, I'll, I'll shake hands and hug before the program. I'll do it after the program. But when it's time for us to minister, I'm in the dressing room and I'm praying. I don't even allow my guys to talk when we are praying. You know, so you have to respect the anointing that's on people's lives. Just as your pastor, uh, your preacher, you know, you just can't go and lie to gag with him before he ministers. But I, I guarantee you. He's going to shake your hand after service. So give respect to the anointing and preparation uh, of, of these singers. We're ministers. It's not like we're Michael Jackson or uh, 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 some of these other R&B stars. We're not. We are ministers. And we have to hear a word from God in order to be effective, because if we're not effective on that stage, you're going to talk about us. You're going to say you're Paul. You're going to say, you know, and it is. Well, Jonas, uh, I I'll add, I'll add last, and how you just say, can you be transparent and re and realistic? Cause I'm I'm the youngest the youngster here. Now let's just be for real. Like you said, one co quartet. We have our own quote, our own culture, culture. our own right. Junk, right. right? Now, mm -hmm. fortunately and unfortunately. Our fan base, a certain percentile, are actually fellow singers, right? Fellow local singers, right? And just let's just be out. People, I know for what for a fact. When I was in my local days, I heard every kind of story you can name about a different artist. And then when I met them, they were nothing like them stories. I right. Heard. And right. then let's just be honest, especially when you either have it or you don't. It's just certain people that people draw to them. So now, for example, okay, you might have heard that Tutu is a uh, little Shirley Caesar all the way around. She's not approachable. I've heard Shirley Caesar is one of the meanest persons in the business and the whole nine. Guess what? It's because she is approached with so much foolishness. Right. Her her her, her, her appetite for foolishness is zero. It, mm -hmm. Yeah. They, and they, even they, as a young age, I know too to a bit. Amen. She had to deal with foolish. Some of these niggas that come up and say the stupidest stuff to them. <laughs> Not cause you know the reason why I know Jonas. I had one in my group. Mm, like that's when I say infatuated with Tammy, he would come up and say the stupidest thing. <laughs> Just come up to her and be like, "Hey Tammy, Tammy, I got some jelly beans. I heard you like jelly beans. You like jelly beans?" <laughs> <laughs> then you know what I'm saying. Then like like Paul said, people come up to you. You ain't gonna speak. Oh, they come up to you. Hey, what's up? You remember? You remember four years ago? You came to this city, and you were sitting. I there had on eating, a green too. Yeah, and you had you yeah. were sitting there eating Doritos, and I said, <laughs> I like Doritos too. You remember that? You remember that? Yeah. And if, you, if, if you don't say yes, they be like, Oh my God! He think oh, he this. He think he that. <laughs> <laughs> they perceive you wrong, Jonas. Yeah. And, and yeah. the thing, I'm gonna tell you what I did. I was so I was so respectable to you know because of the way my daddy raised me, and then just going out there being around the legends that I was just so honored to be around the Bolinaires and the Jackson Southerners and all of them. So one day, after I heard so many horror stories about Willie Willie Banks, you know, I thought that's the way I perceived him before I even met him. So right. one day I was coming down the stairs and Tommy Ellison had just got on uh, Willie Banks' nerve because he sung too long. And Tommy went, I don't, Tommy Ellison looked over him. He said, he said, you sung over your time, Tommy. And he said, Tommy said, I know I did. I did it on purpose. And he just put a <laughs> smile. So the next statement, I'm coming running down the steps, you know, just my little happy jolly go self. 
And Willie Banks said in a real forceful voice, he said, hey, young man, come here. And boy, you talking about my heart stopped beating because I was already yeah. scared of, of, of Willie Banks. And, and I said, sir, and he said, let me tell you something. I like your group. He said, y'all dress like gentlemen with ties. And he said, keep your ties on, man, when you get up there inside. And I said, yes, sir. And I'm going back over here. Because I was always scared. I come talk so many. Everybody else told me it was another way. But when he talked to me, the first thing Willie Banks right. did was give me a compliment. Right. So it's about perception sometimes. Perception. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. But, Paul, that was before the, the Michael Jackson curl, right? Yeah, you, know, that, you wasn't you wasn't talking to people when you had that Michael Jackson curl. I, I my, got our first feet. time, did yeah, I get our coffee? first time together, you did not speak to me, and you had that curl. You you killed them people oh. and then walked right out the door. Get the one that came down your forehead, yeah, that. Yeah, one. and I would pull it down even more, trying to stretch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Keith, and I apologize in 2021. <laughs> and wow. I will never do that again to you, Keith. All right. I, I, I accept your apology. <laughs> oh, boy. This has been fun, and I know you all have to. I know some people on, a, on another time zone, but this has been fun. I believe I'm going to do this again. And uh, I, thank, yeah. I thank Tim. I thank Paul, Keith, Teddy. Tutu, I thank you especially, and I not against my other brothers. I see them all the time. Uh, but my, when I reached out to you, you didn't hesitate. You, you, you didn't hesitate. So I thank you for being the, the queen that you are, uh, your longevity of your multiplicity of hits. Uh, we still going to listen to your hits. We still going to support your music ministry. And, hey, we just feel like I'm like Keith and Paul. I think it's time for you to come on back, you, Tammy, and Miss V. And, and they are Jay. back. Jay, I and Jay, yeah. I, I think I, I'm talking about full force. I'm, 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 I'm full yeah. force. I think it's yeah, like a minute, Let him do it at her pace. At her pace, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I can I add one thing? Can I say one thing? This is no. my closing statement. I'm gonna I'm just gonna wave after this. I want to say, okay, excluding Keith and 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 Teddy, because we just chop it up all the time. So I just want to scoot over to Tutu and Tim. Mm -hmm. From from a legend standpoint of Tutu, I have just always been in awe of you. I, I, I and I'm not trying to, you know, you know, they talk about giving praise to you know people on earth and you know this that. All I'm saying is, Tutu, you have been such an incredible force and such a blessing to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm just such still such a huge fan of you, and mm -hmm. I always love what you do because I know you ain't gonna do it, but one way is take it take it to them what god gives you so god bless you and i'm just i'm 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 like i feel so honored to be on this because of you mainly because i was right. such a big fan when you were a child now scooting over to tim man you came along and blew me away and what do i tell you every time i see you what? i never knew that tim could take any position with the mighty clouds of joy and do it effectively, which blew me away. When I heard Tim singing the top part on one of the walk around heaven and doing it just as great as any top singer that they had. And I mean, I'm just looking at him like, I know that's not him. There's got to be a record. And as well, <laughs> he would have to come out and lead sing and be forceful. He could sing the high range, the mid range, whatever he was called to do, he did it. And so Bless I say bro. my hats off to you for coming along around us and just doing such an incredible job, man. You you deserve that spot that you, you dreamed of. You deserve it because you were worthy through the gift that God gave you. So those Bless are my you, two bro. things. And then lastly to Jonas, thank you for this our platform. Man, y'all just keep doing what y'all doing. I mean, I'm almost tearful because Tutu is on here. And, and it's not it's not just because she's pretty, but I'm just saying, I know this woman's ministry. Yeah. Uh, and and I've seen her even after, even after you know you know just being down in Rocky Mountain, she may be singing a solo or something. This woman has always gave God her best. And so, with that being said, I love y'all, man, Teddy and and, and 
and, and Keith, you know what I feel about y'all as brothers, and we're chopping yeah. up there. Did you just see what happened? Uh, not to cut you off, Jonas. Did you just see what happened? Here's a Paul Porter that's many accolades, sung all over the world, and he took time to bless us. He spoke into our lives. And because he just did that, God's going to bless him. Even though he's greater than I am, Paul has done more, way more than I would probably Ooh. ever do in this industry. No, no, no. But still, he humbled himself and was able to bless us verbally. He didn't go and talk about us. He didn't go and say, that Tim think he can sing. That Tutu thinks she's bad. No, he blessed us. And because he did that, God's going to bless him double portion. Right. That's honor. That's honor. I received. I received. That's right. That's right. Tutu, can you give us closing remarks? Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you and uh, Pastor Teddy Cross, and we're gonna we're gonna close the show out. I think your mic is mute, uh, Jonas. My mic is muted. Can you? No, I hear Tutu. Can you hear us? Chief. Uh, yes. Maybe her. Okay, he wants Jonas, to get What kind remote. of PA you got? You got a cup man, PA? Man, I got old oh, stock. Yeah. I got earth. You got earth. You got earth. You got radio shack. You got a radio shack <laughs> PA. <laughs> oh, Tutu, he, he's asking you for closing remarks. Oh, I think she's you know frozen. What? I'm, I'm really grateful. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that God uh, moved on your heart, Jonas, um, to ask me to be a part of this. And it was actually for me. This, this was for me. You all have blessed me. Um, I hear God saying, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I do believe because of you all confirming it tonight that God still has work for me to do, and I think I'm going to get up and run on. Come on, run. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yes. we're going to support it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we are. We what are. I want to say uh, in closing, um, first of all, uh, I'm honored to be asked to be on this platform, and uh, I, I was telling even Paul on last night or, yet, or today, one day, one time when we talked, uh, I'm grateful because, uh, and just to be, you know, transparent, sometimes you feel forgotten. Um, yeah. I know I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, a Willie Neal Johnson, but I was a Willie Neal Johnson supporter. And, oh, yeah. and sometimes you just feel overlooked. And, and I'm grateful just to be on this platform. Um, mm. I, and, and I'm, and be honest with you, I, it's not a throw off when I say that, but the Bible, the Bible teaches us this, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happened and every every emotion that I've felt has brought me to where I am and taught me who I am. And, and something came up earlier about being local. Let me tell you something. It is nothing wrong with being local because listen, everybody can't be a Willie Neal Johnston. Everybody can not be a Ooh. Joe Lagan. Everybody Say cannot be a Paul Porter. Everybody cannot. <laughs> can, I mean, everybody can't be a Tutu. Everybody can't be a Pastor mm -hmm. Tim. Everybody can't be a, a, a Keith. You gotta be who you are. You are. And uh, and what God has taught me in that experience is, I gotta bloom. I'm right here in a little town, probably most of you never heard of is Raleigh, Mississippi. I got a bloom in Raleigh, Mississippi. And if God chooses to take me to Jackson, Mississippi, cool. If he chooses to take me to Memphis, cool. If not, I'm going to bloom right here where I am. You got to bloom where That's you're good. planted. And, 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 I, and, and just again, just to be invited among this platform, you're talking about Stella Award winning, you know, and, and of course I won a Stella, but I was with Willie Neal Johnson in a supporting uh, 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 position. But just to be among you and, and also Jonas, to be uh, relevant in, in this genre uh, and growing the way you're growing to, to reach out to yeah. a Teddy Cross. 
to me, that is huge. Mm-hmm. So I am grateful uh, to be among you guys. Uh, I'm grateful to still be relevant in Raleigh, Mississippi. And thank God for wherever he takes me, I am good with it. Amen. Okay. Teddy, That's Teddy, good. can I can I can I just share this nugget with you right quick? Right quick. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Right quick. Let me let me help too. And sometimes you need to hear it from somebody else. That way it can help encourage you. All that you said. So that now that like I said, we in a new generation now, a new culture. And so what we used to feel like like being called the local whatsoever, like you said, you can still be professional and but be a low. You are and you have to remember. Everybody's ministry is not meant national. to be a national artist. Right. right. So now the new thing is what the new the newcomers say is, you know, what does it does it take to be mainstream? First, you might not never be mainstream. Right. Right. You got to know who you are. But let me encourage you, Teddy. If sometimes you feel like that, you've had your place. Like for a time, there was a time when the don't get my let me get my letters there but the the convention the quartet convention mm-hmm. in Birmingham sometimes you didn't know your place and how important you were no mm-hmm. you were not you were not Willie Neal Johnson but it was you <laughs> when Willie Neal didn't get a chance to reach all of the local groups it was it was you the one that got the chance to encourage the the local groups to tell them keep singing, keep mm-hmm. don't give up, keep singing. That's why one you and you and JV Johnny Valentine from mm-hmm. the Mighty Clouds of Joy, y'all will always be special to me. I don't care if you run, I'll lift your bag, whatever. Cause guess what, you and JV were the first two pros to ever. Give me a conversation, talk to me, or wow. whatever it was. That, that's and I didn't issue. talk to you, to, No, I, I, I know you ain't talk to me, Paul. You was Come on, stop fixing, it. You was fixing, you, 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 you was fixing your curl. You was fixing your curl. You did not talk to me. Like I said, Teddy Cross and Johnny Valentine was the first people. <laughs> like, for, like, like, so Teddy, always know, man. Like you said, everybody's story is different, but make yeah, sure you yeah. know that, man. You have played a major, important role, buddy, in this thing, what we call quartet history. Yes, man. Yes, it yeah. is. Yes, it oh, is. Yeah. Listen here. I, we're going to close out. Uh, T- Tiffany Tutu, AJ, if you can pray us out. I've enjoyed this, you all. Uh, the comments are going. Are going and I'll go back and read them a little later on. But Tutu, if you can pray us out. And uh, again, thank you, Tim, Paul. Uh, you, Keith, Teddy, thank you. Tutu, thank you for being a part of this week. I believe we got to do a part two of this because there's some stuff I didn't get to, but I don't want to hold y'all up any longer. So, yeah, we, we, if y'all if y'all accept the invitation, we'll definitely come back. You got it. That speaks volumes about you because that speaks volumes about you, Jonas, as awesome. what God has called you to do in this season. Uh-huh. Uh, for you to even be able to convince us to come on, it says something about your character. That's and right. there's no us yeah. without you. Right. So we That's thank right. you for the opportunity. And, and then, and like you told me, you told you talked to me. You were, you were saying, uh, you were iffy about it because you don't do, you know, yeah. technology stuff. You don't, you just don't right. do it. So I thank you for, for the, for the I window. Did uh, you did. I, I knew, I knew that I was coming to a, a man of character, and as well, you know, it doesn't put me on no plateau. But I just say I don't get on all of them. I, you know, even with no, social media. You what, you let me let me make this little quick statement. Before social media was coming along, all controversy was going on then. But now that we have the social medias, people abuse it because. They're doing what yeah. they normally would have done, but they're now they're just actually exposing it better because with one touch of the button, they can talk all the way in Japan. <laughs> right, so right. me, I'm very reserved at, you know, because, you know, just like I, we were talking about perception, you can say a loke or say something the wrong way and everybody takes it the wrong way and it's just spread it for months and months and months mm-hmm. on your character. Mm-hmm. Right. So what I do is take a zero sometimes, but when you call, Man, I was honored to do it. I was glad to do it because of your character. 
Bless you, man. Bless you so much. Listen, two two. If you can pray us out, we're gonna go. But I think you got a connection problem. We're gonna we're gonna pray us out, and we're gonna. Go. It might be your sound system, John. <laughs> 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 I, I think it's her connection. I, I think it's her connection. Uh, so can you that, hear us? That that might be the signal that we need to stay on a little longer, man. I have, <laughs> I might believe, I have, might have a word for you. And I really believe, I really believe that Keith is the problem with all that clicking and everything. So we got to start muting our mics until it's done. Wow. And, and so it'll be more pleasant. In the Tutu, words can you hear us? of yeah, Reverend froze, Slim yeah. Howard Hunt. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That what's that song? Uh, now I, I I can't lie to you. This real talk. This a real crazy story, Jonas. Okay. okay, it was a group. It was a group. They had a hit. This song was a hit song, but the the leader he just loved himself some Slim, and Slim came up to him. He said, "Hey man." That new song, man. That thing doing good. That thing doing. He was like, "Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's playing all over. We going places. We, mm -hmm. you know, we going places we ain't never been before." He said, "Man, that's good." And he, he took three steps back away from him and then looked back and said, "You do know you still local, though, right?" <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Listen, oh. since she's having connection problems, Pastor Teddy Cross, can you pray us out? And, uh, uh, and if you can, say a special prayer for this industry because it, it, at this point, oh, Lord, this Jesus. Season, so yes. uh, if you yes. can do that for us, uh, and then we're going to close out. God, we thank you for all that has gone forth tonight, every word. And thank you, God, for that every word was taken in the right spirit, in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you right now, and we do pray for our industry, uh, especially the gospel, especially uh, the quartet. We pray for us today that we adapt the right mindset to affect this country, affect this world the way we're yes. supposed to. God, we thank you right now. The When we've come with the wrong thoughts and the wrong mm -hmm. mindset, God, we repent yes, before Lord. you. We want to make it right because at the end of the day, if we have, uh, we don't want to hear the, you say, depart from me, your works were in iniquity. Some would say people got saved under me, but he says your works are in iniquity. God, we want to make it in. We want to live with you on high forever. So God, whatever needs to be changed on the inside of us, show us what show we us need God. to do. Show yeah. us the steps. Give us words that we don't hurt each other. Give us words that we build each other up. We've been we've been used to downing other people, even in front of their faces and behind their backs, hurting their feelings. God, thank you that you change our hearts and work it from the inside out. Show us what to do in this next uh, season. We know that we're going through changes. We yes. cannot adapt the ways of the world, but the ways of the world has to be adapted from us. God, mm -hmm. thank you. As we lead, as we lead and the world yes. follows, lead us so that we can lead in the right directions. And God, as we leave this place, never from your presence, go with us and guide us until the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. Right. Much, much love to y'all. And I'll see much you love. next time. All right. Bless you. All right. Bless you. you.